Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. This is a long-awaited episode for many people, the Troublemaker Tally from 2018. So this was a limited edition guitar that was part of Fender's Parallel Universe series that they did in 2018. It was a lineup of nine guitars that mix and match their flagship models. And in 2020, they're actually doing a volume two to these. But I've documented quite a few of these from the Strat Tele hybrid to the Jag Strat mashup, and I fell in love with the Jazz Tellies. But today, let's get into trouble. So the Troublemaker Tele. This is the blending of a Telecaster Deluxe and a Les Paul. <laughs> That's why this was the second most popular one that was released at NAMM, second to the Meteora, because the Meteora, it was something completely new and different, but this thing was ruffling some feathers. Because look at it, it's a Les Paul in a Telecaster format. But let's dive in a little bit. You're gonna notice I said this is a Telecaster Deluxe, not a regular Telecaster in a Les Paul mashup, a Telecaster Deluxe. Those things were introduced in 1972 and only lasted about nine years until 1981. They were designed to kind of convert Gibson players over to Fenders because of the new wide range humbuckers that they had developed. So we've got the wide range humbuckers, which is what we kind of have here. We have this big pick guard that covers almost the entire guitar, which we do not have here. The pick guard on this one is actually kind of a modified Cabernita Telecaster. They also had the two volume and two tone control layout with the toggle switch on the upper bout. And that's exactly what this guitar has as well, except for it's not mounted on a pick guard. And the last main feature to note from those guys is the large headstock. They're large because, you know, it was made in 1972. The 70s is like that birth era of that large headstock. It's what both Gibson and Fender were doing, but it actually started in the late 60s for Fender. So now that we know about the Tele Deluxe, this is not really all that Les Paul. There's only two big features that are borrowed from the Les Paul. The biggest one being, well, we've got a bridge and tailpiece set up here. <laughs> That's directly taken from a Gibson styled instrument, but it's the body woods that really make this different from any other Telecaster. So we have a two piece maple top. It's not a thin veneer, it's an actual top. I'll show you guys proof of that on the workbench here in a minute. And on the back, it's a mahogany body, which Fender occasionally uses, but a mahogany neck as well. So this is all of the tone woods that Les Pauls are well known for using. And you can top that all off with a rosewood fretboard. So it's just kind of a interesting blend of Les Paul specs and a Telecaster Deluxe, as the name kind of implies here. So in reality, they did not actually steal that much from the Les Paul but there's enough in here to make it a little bit cheeky. And that's why I love this thing. But something that was nice for this run, you could actually get them in two different finishes. There's a blue one, which kind of feels more like a Fender-esque color. I know there's some Pelham blue Gibsons out there, but not that many Les Pauls. But then there's this one, the iced tea finish. This is 100% Gibson territory because these guys actually get slightly figured maple tops to them. Some have more flame than others. This one has some tight pin stripes but a beautiful plain top. And in case you want some more colors and you can't afford the new Parallel Universe from 2020, there are Japan exclusive versions that are made in red, black, and white. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and take an in-depth look at its parts and specs. Inside the Troublemaker Tally, this is where I'm gonna make good on my promise with a video of this one, Les Paul Expert reacts to the Troublemaker Tally. So I'm gonna compare this to a Les Paul this entire time so you guys can actually see the differences and how this actually isn't as close to a Les Paul as you would think. So first off, starting with the pickups, we do have two humbuckers that utilize a similar ring as a Les Paul, but you're gonna notice this one actually has a double adjustment spring right here and one right there, and it's kind of the wide range style looking one, and that says Fender on it. So this is the one T in the neck and the Shawbucker two T in the bridge. So this is definitely looking different from what a Gibson style pickup would look like, and you actually have a little bit more adjustment capabilities on these guys. As far as the pickup readings go, in the bridge it's about 7.3, the neck 6.89, and the middle just for fun here, about half that, 3.55. Inside the control cavities you have the typical fender barcodes in them yet, that's how they identify it throughout the factory. But I want you to take close attention to this. 
see how it's routed. It is not routed the same way as a Les Paul. So Les Pauls just kind of have a channel that goes straight into this little cavity right here for all the controls, right? But this guy actually kind of routes like this, and then he goes in here, and then it kind of swoops in there like that. So that's actually a little bit different as compared to a Les Paul style route. And of course, the location of the pole pieces on the pickup is very different as well. But something that really bugs the crap out of me about this guitar is the poker chip. If you want to know why this thing's bugging me, is it's like the fake Gibson style version of these, kind of what they use on their Epiphone models. For comparison, here's a poker chip from an 80s Gibson. You see how the rhythm and treble font is completely different. It's a little bit smaller, just looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Is this style of a washer on it, because that's what you find on the Epiphones too. Had they had done the recessed skirt version of this, it would have looked so much cleaner, and especially if they would have done the right font. So that's just a small attention to detail thing that bugs me. Maybe it bugs you now, but now let's move on to this. So this is what Fender calls the Adjustomatic Bridge. Gibson's famous Nashville style bridge is called the Tunomatic, so it's just kind of a play on words for that. But you're gonna notice, I thought just looking at this that this would be the case. This is made by the same people that make Gibson's parts, Advanced Plating Incorporated. You see the API? <laughs> Oh, Fender, you sly dog, stealing their manufacturer. And I thought that might be the case, and I wanted to react to it live on camera because I saw the hex keys that you can adjust this by. But this thing is super lightweight. So now let's see, did they steal Gibson's manufacturer of the tailpiece? <laughs> oh, Fender, I love you for that. Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sure there's a bunch of other manufacturers that used Advanced Plating Incorporated, but yeah, that just works. So now moving on to the knobs. Yes, Gibson does use a witch hat style knob on some guitars, mainly in the mid 70s. You notice how these are diagonal. Gibsons are straight up and down. That's how you can tell the fakes from the good ones. So maybe this layout just works better for the Telecaster body. But it kind of bugs me. I wish they would have went for a more traditional layout and lined them up a bit better. But who knows, maybe there's something protecting them against that. So that's pretty much the main gist here. Something that they also borrowed from the Les Paul is the bound body. It kind of hides the maple cap, and obviously the maple cap here, it's not as thick as on a Les Paul, but that's still a full top. It's not a veneer or anything. It ends pretty much where that white polishing compound begins. And it's still a flat top. How creepy would this thing have been if they done a carved top on it? I would love to see Fender do like a more tried and true Les Paul build on one of these in the future. But this has a beautiful two-piece maple top to it. It's got a little bit of figuring. Some of these are more flamier than others. This is just a very mild plain top, but I love all the wood grain it's got going on. And your center seam line is right there. And then moving on over here, I really like these mineral streaks in here. And if you want to play it pick guard off, you can. You're just going to have all those holes right there. But this is using that Cabernita style pick guard. But now moving on to the neck, we have narrow tall fret wire with 22 frets. So that's kind of akin to a Les Paul right here. And you have these pearloid dot inlays. I think this is a missed opportunity for them. They could have done a trapezoid inlay, unless Gibson has some sort of patent on that. So that's more of a Telecaster Deluxe type feature, but they borrowed the pearloid dots from Gibson. But they did do the rosewood fretboard, but they forgot one big thing. They forgot to put binding on it and chew up the fretboard with tooling marks. <laughs> I'm definitely happy that the Volume 2 Troublemaker Tellies did get binding on them, because I think that's definitely a glaring flaw that they missed with these to really make this look like a Les Paul standard. Because that's essentially what they're going for based off of this finish and the cherry back. But as far as our next specs, we have a bone nut that measures 1.69 inches. And by the 12th, it's 2.02. .02. We have a first fret neck depth of 0.83. And by the 12th, 0.93. Fender calls this their modern deep C neck profile shape. I guess they borrowed this directly from the Telecaster lineup. But here you can see your truss rod axis is right up here. They didn't do a Gibson style rod or anything in there. And then this is the large Telecaster Deluxe head stock shape. You know, it looks pretty cool with the mahogany neck on this. You do not see mahogany necks from Fender that often. But you've got a cool Fender logo, 
Corona California, Telecaster Deluxe. And as compared to a Gibson, you have a straight string pole design for these guys. So that's a small plus. And lastly, this is kind of a disappointing spec. They went for the Fender 25 and a half inch scale length. 24 and three quarters would have been so much cooler. <laughs> really going after Gibson at that point. But again, hopefully they do something like that in the future where it's more 85% Les Paul and 15% Telecaster DNA. They also have this one at a nine and a half inch radius. Most Gibsons are 12 inches. So that's something else they could also consider for a future run. Really cool feature that I do want to point out is they actually did a pearloid inlay on the side of the neck as well. That's not something I'm used to seeing on a fan these things definitely catch the light in a really beautiful way. Moving on to the back here, yeah, it's strange seeing a Telecaster have routes back here, but they did swap these up a little bit. So this is a Gibson styled one over here. This is what Fender's done. They've essentially just shrunk it down a little bit, but I think it would have been cool if they just would have left it be the regular Les Paul style. Same thing with the toggle switch plates. This one's actually completely different. This is the Les Paul one. It would regularly be circular, but they went with more of an oblong one, as you can see right here. But as far as the style switch that they used, yeah, that's a Les Paul style one. And you can tell that they actually shielded this cavity. But Fender just used CTS style pots in here and they have their typical PCB things on there for their capacitors, I believe. But the wiring job on this, I wouldn't say it's very good. These wires look like they could just fall off. And in fact, one of them has fallen off from the output jack. I don't know if it got jostled around in shipping to me, but this wire is no longer attached to the output jack. We'll have to see what that is. It might just be a grounding thing. We'll find out. But the output is still Telecaster in style. It's a barrel on the outside. That would have been cool if they would have did it Les Paul style though. And the strap buttons are definitely Fender in style. But it's kind of a letdown that they didn't do these a set neck. But I guess since they were going for the 25 and a half inch scale length, they're more so trying to make this a Fender. They weren't trying to make this 100% Gibson by any means, but they did give it a nitrocellulose finish though, so it's not a poly finish. And the back of the neck, from the factory, it was supposed to be satin. This one, the guy said he plays it all the time, so it's actually naturally turned into a glossy finish here. But on the back side of the headstock, here you can see where it's still that thin satin finish back here. But this is indeed a mahogany neck with a walnut skunk stripe on it on a Fender electric guitar. And you've got your Fender Deluxe tuners up here. There's no serial number there because it is on the back of the neck plate here. But they got the weight just about right. We're just slightly under nine pounds here, which is like the average for a Les Paul. So eight pounds, 14.4 ounces. But let's go ahead, plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know everything about the Troublemaker Tele, what are my final thoughts on this thing? The more and more I compared it to the Telecaster Deluxe to a Les Paul, the more and more I was like, you know, they weren't actually trying to make this a Les Paul. They could definitely change up a few specs to make this like 95% Les Paul and just have the Telecaster shaped body. But at this point in time, there's nothing like that available. This is just kind of a uh, modernized Telecaster Deluxe for the most part, because it doesn't quite have that Gibson sound, and I don't think they were exactly going for that. It's honestly just a really dark sounding Telecaster. It's not quite Gibson humbucker-like, but it's completely different from a regular Tele, and it lends itself to certain styles of music really well. Like the owner of this, they asked me to play a little bit of Tool on it, and this guitar can do that. It's got that nice, dark mellow tone, but if you're trying to do funky stuff, maybe not quite as well, but it kind of depends what kind of tones you're going for. So is this an everyday player that you can take to every single gig? No, not really, but it's definitely a cool piece to have in your collection for when you need these tones, because it definitely has a unique voice. But it does kind of have a really cool vibe to it, so I'm a fan of the Troublemaker Tellies just based on that. Fender's just being cheeky here. But as far as playing this thing, it's definitely Telecaster, and I think that all comes down to the neck shape, the radius, and just how it feels in your hands. This is still a 100% Fender product. It's not really going to convert any Gibson lovers over. Because the way a guitar feels all comes down to the neck, and since this has the neck of the Telecaster, it's definitely not a Les Paul substitute. But it is a fun model in the Fender lineup. Now this guitar was graciously sent to me by a fan, he's not interested in selling it, he just wanted his personal guitar documented. And so there was a good video out about the Troublemaker Tele that wasn't just an advertisement. So let's go ahead and check it out under blacklight before we say goodbye. There's not too much going on here because it's a fairly new guitar, but it is a nitro finish, so as it ages it will start to turn more green, but everything's looking pretty good on this one. No crazy surprises from the factory. <laughs> You never know what you'll get on a brand new guitar. Cool. I don't think there's any new ones left in the world yet, but if there are, this is what you would originally get with it. It's got three TSA styled latches and a nice handle. I mean, all the Fender cases are pretty darn similar. They're not super padded. You can usually fit a Stratocaster or a Telecaster in these things. They do their job. And inside here sleeps some case candy which in this case is all this. It tells you how to care for the lacquer finish. It just tells you not to open it too quickly. You got the Fender owner's manual here, some of the additional case tags and things like that. Truss rod adjustment tool and action adjustment key, as well as a nice little baggie to keep all this stuff in. Now I noticed these 2018 Fenders get a slightly taller bag than the 2019s because the 2019s these coas always get kind of bent up a little bit just to get them to fit in there so i think they did this a little bit better in 2018. thank you troglodytes for tuning in today i hope you enjoyed finally getting to see the troublemaker telecaster and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care <laughs>